Uh, there's no way this is going to look good, so I might as well stop trying. I know I ask this every year, but why do I do this to myself? I mean, they, they even say it. That this, this author... Shit, I was going to look up the pronunciation of his name. That's a thing I was going to do. Uh, so this author is a speaker. He does workshops, motivational stuff. He did TED Talks. That's why I was going to look up the pronunciation of his name. No, we don't care about Ben Hur. Is he not going to introduce himself? Come on. Uh, behind the brand. Hey, here in my backyard. I do not care about whatever you're selling. Tell me your name. Are the people who made these videos also unsure of how to pronounce his name? Is that why they're just putting it in the pop-ups? Dear lord. We have the internet. We should be able to do better than this. Thank you! Rohit Bhargava. The book today is Non-Obvious by Rohit Bhargava. Right, so this book kind of went in one ear and out the other, which is why I'm doing this panicked and immediately while it is still in my head. Uh, Rohit Bhargava is, among other things, a guy who writes a trend report every year about business trends and gives them cutesy little names that are kind of... Uh, he says he doesn't want things to be buzzwordy, but they play to me as buzzword... <coughs> buzzwordy. They are totally buzzwordy. And this book is just him going through his process and explaining it for other people, and then not digging into it very deeply. Like, there would be times where I'd turn the page expecting for elaboration on a topic, and the chapter would just end. So I found this book a little frustrating. It's, it's the kind of book where he, he defines curating ideas and why it's important pretty well, but he doesn't define what a trend is until after he's told you what to look for in trends, and then he defines what a trend is based on the things he tells you to look for in them. Like, it, it's... It's a little bit light in that way. If I was coming to this book thinking, man, I wanna... I wanna get into trend reporting, how do other people do trend reporting? Or if I was going into this book thinking, I could use some more organizational ideas about how to deal with these trends I'm compiling. Or I could really use a whole bunch of examples of trends and how other people have done them. This book would be perfect. This would be exactly what I need. And it might be exactly what you need. But I wanted more from it. Uh, there's a section where he's like, it's a short little section about the dangers of false certainty and general skepticism around future predictions. Except that it doesn't tell you how to be skeptical about future predictions, or, or tell you what red flags are in your compiling of information for trends and predictions. It just basically says, yeah, you're gonna be wrong sometimes. Don't be discouraged. Try not to fall into that hubris of, of being too certain. There's nothing about this book that feels disingenuous or blatantly incorrect, or even... It's, it's not even self-aggrandizing. Like, all of this is real info, real stuff from this guy. But it really... I really feel like this book should have been left to simmer for like another couple years until he could bite down into those things and, and ask the question, are these methods that I use going to be useful for everybody? Are there some alternatives I can recommend? Can I talk about when those alternatives are going to be useful for individuals. But instead, this really is just an accounting of how he does what he does. Set up workshops, uh, predict trends, it's all, he, he uses his own trends as examples and critiques the ones that didn't work. If, if you want to do all that work yourself, this is a huge, great data point. It, it's got stuff for you to crunch, but it doesn't crunch anything for you. And it made it very hard to read. I, I don't come into these books thinking, yeah, I want to learn about trends. Uh, I pick books for, for summer reading program based on, oh, 
hey, here's something completely different. Let's learn new stuff about it. And when a book really is like the book version of a speaking engagement or a workshop, then I do not get what I want out of it. This is not a very meaty review, because I couldn't find much meat in the book. I'm just glad I finally finished something less than 300 pages toward my ultimate goal. Uh, I took the Goblin Emperor back to the library, unread, to focus on this project. I want you to know that I did that. I could be reading the Goblin Emperor. I suppose I could make that my recommendation for this video, because the Goblin Emperor by Catherine Addison, if I'm remembering, remembering that correctly off the top of my head, is very well respected. So yeah, let's recommend that, though I have not finished it and not read it. And, uh, how else can I recommend to you? Alright, so here's an idea. So I mentioned I read the, the, the Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up by Marie Kondo. Or I listened to it. And one of the results it had is that I finally sold off a bunch of video games that I was never going to play again and got a fuck ton of store credit that I've been spending almost exclusively on Nintendo DS and Nintendo 3DS games. So because I have a bunch of them, because I am branching out and trying new things in this format, why not recommend a few? Ghost Trick for the Nintendo DS, which still plays on the Nintendo 3DS. It is a puzzle game. You are playing as a ghost who is trying to solve your own murder because you don't remember anything about yourself. This is apparently a side effect that happens to some ghosts. What I love about it is that it has like exactly the same set premise as, um... I've forgotten the name, a much more recent AAA game where you are a ghost trying to solve your own mysterious murder. But while that game was not ultimately very well reviewed and very dark and somber, this is a comedy, and it really works. And it's got some very cute animations and some very fun characters, and the puzzles are not so hard that I couldn't do it, which is very important to me. I screamed at Professor Layton and the Curious Village. If, if that gives you some idea of how I approach puzzles. And it is a masterclass in storytelling. It's very good at setting up clues long before they become relevant so that you're used to the ideas it's setting up and they don't feel like they're being pulled out of left field. If you're looking for a DS or 3DS game to play that you may have missed, 100% Ghost Trick. Made by the Phoenix Wright people, if that helps as well. Next book is Mindfire. Will it set my mind on fire? Well, non-obvious didn't teach me how to think different, so probably not. But, uh, it's short. I'm not gonna get much money out of it, but maybe that means I'll be able to blow through it quickly. Until next time. Mm -hmm.